Hello students, welcome to today's lesson where we shall discuss the play Mother's Day. Most often we take our mothers for granted, especially if she is a homemaker or a housewife. The duties of a homemaker is paramount in the smooth running of the institution of a family or home. However, it is also the most thankless job. This play is a dramatic representation of the status of one such homemaker, mother, in the family and how her neighbor comes to her rescue to finally empower her. Before we begin with the play, let us learn a little about our writer, J.B. Prisley. Born in West Yorkshire, England, in the year 1894, John Boynton Prisley was an English novelist playwright, scriptwriter, social commentator and broadcaster. His notable works include Albert Goes Through, They Walk in the City and The Doomsday Men. Before we begin with the play, let us familiarize ourselves with the characters of the play. We have the entire Pearson family, namely Mrs. Annie Pearson, the homemaker, George Pearson, the husband, Doris Pearson, the daughter, Cyril Pearson, the son. Besides these characters, we have Mrs. Fitzgerald, a neighbor of the family. The play begins in the living room of the Pearson family in an early autumn afternoon. The living room is a comfortably furnished, much lived in room in a small suburban villa. The scene opens with Mrs. Pearson at right and Mrs. Fitzgerald at left, sitting opposite each other at a small table on which are two teacups, saucers and cards with which Mrs. Fitzgerald has been telling Mrs. Pearson's future. As the dialogues of the play begin, we see Mrs. Fitzgerald advising Mrs. Pearson that a future dependent on her actions and decisions. Mrs. Pearson thanked her in return and said that it was wonderful to live next door to an authentic fortune teller. Mrs. Fitzgerald was a fortune teller who had lived in the East with her lieutenant husband and learned the art of fortune telling for 12 years. She advised Mrs. Pearson to gather courage and protest against the thoughtless, ungrateful behavior of her family members. She encouraged her to be the mistress and boss of her own family. Despite her wanting to do so, Mrs. Pearson had not been able to raise her voice against her ill treatment by her husband and children. Her status had been reduced to that of an unpaid servant in the house where her family members did not appreciate her daily struggles to keep the family running. She was extremely fond of them but disliked their thoughtlessness and selfish behavior. However, she was not too confrontational and avoided raising her voice due to chances of ensuing unpleasantness in the family. Mrs. Pearson said how she kept dropping hints to her family members without having a clear conversation with them. However, Mrs. Fitzgerald warned her that hints were not sufficient to make her family respect her and treat her well. Mrs. Fitzgerald was extremely angry at how Mrs. Pearson was treated in her own house. She suggested a plan to reform Mrs. Pearson's family and make them realize and appreciate the sacrifices and selfless devotion of Mrs. Pearson. So what was this plan? Mrs. Fitzgerald suggested a plan of personality exchange where she and Mrs. Pearson would exchange personalities by virtue of a magic spell. And thus, it would be Mrs. Fitzgerald in Mrs. Pearson's body who would set the family members straight. At first, Mrs. Pearson was skeptical and refused to believe that such a trick was possible. However, on Mrs. Fitzgerald's insistence and assurance that it was reversible, she gave in to the idea. The spell was performed by Mrs. Fitzgerald muttering Ashtatadam, Ashtatalam, Ashtatalamdam Bona as both of them held hands and stared at each other. The spell immediately took effect and their personalities were exchanged. Thus, Mrs. Pearson now had her own body but Mrs. Fitzgerald's strong personality and vice versa. Mrs. Pearson was shocked to see herself in Mrs. Fitzgerald's body. She was nervous and wanted to change back immediately. 
However, Mrs. Fitzgerald, now in Mrs. Pearson's body, insisted that she first dealt with her family and set them straight. She advised Mrs. Pearson to go to her house so that it would not raise suspicion. Soon after, Mrs. Pearson sat smoking a cigarette and laying out cards for a game of patience. Patience is a card game one can play alone. Next, we are introduced to the character of Doris Pearson. Doris was a pretty girl in her early 20s. However, she was ill-mannered and spoiled. She walked in hastily and demanded her yellow silk dress, which she had asked to be ironed and kept ready by evening. However, she stood shocked as she saw her mother smoking. Doris was further shocked when she asked for her evening tea but Mrs. Pearson replied that she had not made any for her. Doris demanded her tea and her silk dress rather rudely. She further added that she deserved to be treated well and given tea after her day's hard work. Students, notice how rudely Doris demands that her mother do her work for her. She does not have a word of thanks and doesn't make a polite request as she thinks that she is entitled to be served by her mother just because her mother is a homemaker. Have you ever behaved this way with either of your parents? If you ever have, learn to apologize and never repeat such insensitive and thankless acts in the future. Mrs. Pearson soon pointed out that she put in twice the number of hours as Doris and got no wages or gratitude in return. She then asked Doris why she needed her yellow silk dress, to which Doris replied that she was about to go out with Charlie Spence that evening. Mrs. Pearson expressed her disapproval of Charlie Spence and called him buck teeth and half-witted. She advised Doris to find someone better. Doris was both stunned and reduced to tears by her mother's forthright, no-nonsense way of talking and left the room crying. How do Mrs. Pearson's son and husband react? Does the family learn to respect Mrs. Pearson? We shall soon find out in the next part of our video lesson. See you soon.